Hello everyone, I'm Paul Tilly and welcome to the Atlantic Trades Business Certificate Scheduling Production, which is Topic 2 in the Operations Management Module. I, I like this module because it's a very practical module, okay? It, it takes all the things we've looked at in the first three modules and it starts to take some of the theory and employs it, okay? This one here, Scheduling Production, is a great one if you're in a trades business and you have a whole bunch of balls that you have to juggle and you have to kind of figure out how to make things happen or how to align things so that you can plan for events happening before they happen and make sure you get enough materials, supplies, resources, people, all these things in place to make those things happen. So it's very much casting your mind ahead and planning out for events as they come up. Generally, in terms of your resources, and if you think about you, you got a firm, you're managing this, you've got people you got to concern yourself with, is that's one of the first resources. Okay, your human resources, your people. You got product resources. Okay, you got stuff. I'll call it stuff for lack of a better term that's in your business. And you got the equipment, I'll call it the equipment in order to make that stuff or to turn that stuff into something useful. So really you got three things there. You got you gotta have the right people at the right place using the right equipment in order to produce the product that you're producing. So we need to be able to kind of get all three of those balls up in the air and be able to manage our production so that we can get what we want when we need it. Most companies need to figure out exactly what it is they're doing in terms of the production process, okay? So probably the very first issue that any company would ask themselves is what is it we produce? So for certain companies, that answer is very clear. Let's assume, for example, that uh, we're a construction company, we build things. Well, we build houses, we build cabins, we build apartment buildings, we build these sorts of things. Very clear, very understandable. Other types of companies, it may not be as clear. And, and this is really something that you need to consider when you're, when you're starting your business. What is it we do? What is the primary thing? And as you work through your business plan, which is the next unit, uh, the next module, uh, we're gonna ask, <clears throat> we're gonna dig into that issue a little bit more. But for our sake, let's assume that you're very clear on what you're producing. Because you know what you're producing, you should be able to determine what type of resources you need and how many of those resources you need in order to complete the tasks required for that. So let's assume that you're in the construction business. You're going to need wood, lumber, uh, materials. You're going to need people who are carpenters, skilled in the trade, these sorts of things. So these are very much wrapped up in, in what we produce. Okay? Then you're going to have to consider, and secondly, how is it you're going to use those resources in order to do the job you're going to do? So should you rely more on machines and equipment or should you rely more on people? Should you rely more on certain types of equipment or certain types of tasks and less on others? Take, for example, our little business that we'll carry through in, in this example here of uh, your construction business and you build cabins, okay? If you build cabins, particularly lob type cabins, you're going to need uh, people who know how to... Uh, use a chainsaw, you're going to need chainsaws, you're going to need land, you're going to need trees, you're going to need to be able to cut them down, you're going to be able to do some work on the trees in order to get rid of the, the bark on them, you're going to be able to have to stack the trees. So you have to have the basic understanding of how to build log cabins and the resources necessary in order to achieve that construction. With regards to scheduling, scheduling kind of allows us to complete the production process effectively and efficiently. Now, scheduling, we most often think of scheduling for in a forward direction. Okay, let's plan ahead. Okay, we want to construct a log cabin, for example, in our business example. That log cabin is going to require a series of tasks, events, processes in order to be constructed. So you can chart those ahead in terms of time. That's what's called forward scheduling. That forward scheduling will also give us a sense of what we need to do now in order to have those things ready for the schedule as it comes up. So this type of scheduling is called backward scheduling, where we go back in time to say we have to order stuff now, right now, in order to have it arrive in time for the production process as it moves forward. So first we do forward scheduling, which plans the process ahead. 
And then from each event in the forward schedule, we have to back it off and say, okay, when do we need to order or get that stuff in place? So that by the time that arrives in our production schedule, we have the material supplies and various resources necessary in order to achieve the task. The service industry, this is common in the service industry too, when they have to have enough supply of the product or the, the service provide, the service provisions, in order to provide the service when it's needed. So a good example could be, let's assume that you're a restaurant and you know that most people show up at the restaurant at supper time. Well, you have to plan ahead in order to make sure you got staff at supper time in order to fulfill, to fulfill the, the demand requirement at supper time. Now, certain things are fairly easy to schedule. If you've got standardized products, let's assume you're making these pins, okay? If you're making these pins, it's a pretty standardized product. If you look at this pin, for example, I'll take it apart. So I got the, the cap. I got this little blue piece on the top here. That little piece. I've got the, the ink element, and I've got the barrel, and I've got this little stainless steel part. Now, all of those, that's probably not stainless steel, but anyway, you need to make sure that, okay, there are five components to that pin. Uh, different manufacturers are making all, like the steel manufacturer or whoever, make, whatever it's made of, the, that part would have to be made somewhere. This part is made of some sort of a plastic. That's some particular type of plastic. This is another particular type of plastic. You got to think about what, what's involved here. How long is it going to take to get this raw material in so that when you get it, you need all five components in your factory. So you need this part to be able to put into this part to be able to put this piece on and this piece on. So that you can make a pin. So again, scheduling, we got to think of all the pieces and components coming together and schedule those. But it's a standardized product. Every pin has exactly five components and we know how long it takes. Fairly straightforward. Sometimes we can have modular uh, production too. Um, let's think about, uh, I'll bring you out to Hibernia. I think most of our Hebron, uh, doesn't matter. Uh, you, you probably are aware that that was really two major components. There's a cement base, which had to be built. Okay, that sits on the ocean floor and it sticks up, out, sticks up out of the water. And then there's the top sides that had to be built. So two of them were built separately. The bottom was built in one part of the yard or, you know, uh, got towed out, but basically one part of the yard. And the top was built in another part of the yard. In fact, the top was probably made of four or five components that came from all over the world. But let's just say there's two components. So you had to produce those components so that, and the schedule had to be so that, they were both ready at the right time in order to get made it together. Because if it took three years to make this part and 20 years to make this part, you know, you're not going to have, so you need to be able to have them come together at the right time. So again, in terms of modular, one of the components with scheduling with modulars to make sure that the two components are ready to be made it together or put together all at the same time. So it's like two separate processes going on that you have to schedule, but they have to be coordinated so that they come together at the end. The last type of, of, of uh, type of scheduling is the most difficult one. That is when you got custom, a custom product. So this is a one of, and you think about a custom product, nobody's ever built it before, not necessarily, you know, you, maybe there is something it's been built for, but there's a lot of, it's very difficult to be able to schedule things that you've never done before and never been considered. So a custom product is the hardest thing to schedule. Um, if, for example, you're a woodworker and you're making a brand new chair that you've never made before, how long is it going to take you to do that? Well, depending on your level of experience, you might be able to guesstimate how long it's going to take to make something. But where it's the first, there is that doubt in your mind. You can't guarantee that it's going to take that. So scheduling is much more difficult in a custom environment. Muskrat Falls is a classic example. You know, you think about, have they built Muskrat Falls before? No. They build other hydroelectric projects and they tend to have an idea. But to be able to hammer down and say, this will be exactly ready at this point in time is very hard to do because it's very much a custom product. We also got to consider, you know, we could have standardized 
specialized or modular or customized, we got to think about our capacity in our organization too. How fast can we make something? That's that's something that's going to affect the schedule. For for if we've got, um, you know, if we're trying to build a house, let's assume you want to build a house, and you say to yourself, well, I don't have any tools to build a house. I got a box saw. That's all I got. It's going to take you a lot longer to build a house without the tools, right? Now, if you got all the tools, particularly if you got electric or gas driven, and they can work much faster, or, you know, those things can be made much faster. So again, capacity is really a, a big function in terms of scheduling too, because we have to ask yourself, can we meet the schedule with the capacity that we have? So we have to consider what is the capacity of our organization? And this creates some problems in, in terms of organizations that don't have a good handle on their capacity. You know. It's great to get an order for 20,000 units of something, but do you have the capacity to make 20,000 units within the time frame? And if you don't, what do you need in order to do that? Scheduling requires a lot of these considerations to come together, and I suppose it all comes down to time, right? We need to be able to have it at the right point in time. So that's the basic problem. That's the basic problem, okay? We've got all these balls up in the air here. We got people, we got processes, we got equipment, we got consideration for the type of products being made, if it's a custom product, if it's a standard product, we got capacity of the organization, all those things come into it and the time. So we ask yourself, is there some system that we can develop then to help address all of those problems in one? So we got so many fluid parts. Is there some sort of a systematic approach that we can have to scheduling? And the simple answer is yes, there is. And there's been a lot of work done on this, particularly since World War II. Uh, World War II uh, raised a lot of interest in terms of how can we do things more efficiently, okay? Um, one of the things that came up there was uh, scheduling processes. And there's a whole component of business called operations management or systems management. There's a bunch of names on it. But effectively, that whole theory of business says, how can we schedule things? How can we schedule things and what are some of the constraints with regards to scheduling? We have found that in order to schedule, it is nice to have some graphical representation of, to, of this issue of all these components in order to kind of clearly see in one visual of how we can see to the end of a given production process, okay? The tool that has come out of World War II that is most used by businesses is something called a Gantt chart. And a Gantt chart, what it does is it breaks down a production process into all of its key components. So here we have, this is a, a typical Gantt chart, okay? And what we have, as I said, if we break down the process into its various components. So here I have an example of a cabin built. Okay, we want to build a cabin. And if we ask ourselves, okay, what are the things that are required in order to build a cabin? Well, first of all, our first task is we got to plan it. Our second task is we have to get a piece of land. The third task is we have to clear some land. And we have to cut some logs. Then we have to remove the bark from the logs. Then we have to install a foundation or floor. Then we have to build walls. Then we have to install the windows and doors. Then we have to install a roof and install a heating system. Now, this is for illustrative purposes only. I may have missed some parts. I don't build very many cabins, but anyway, you'll get the gist out of this. So let's assume that those uh, 10 things are the things that are required in order to build a cabin. Fair enough? So the first task, you have put your mind in work first to plan something. That's the very first task to build a cabin. So let's assume that you search the internet and you find a plan, bang. It takes you a week to do that. You're at this and you can see the time involved was one week. And you'll see the little red dot, a red block right there. And what that means is that that happened in the first week. Now, the thing is, while you're planning a cabin, you can also secure land. You can. There's nothing to stop you from buying a piece of land at the same time you're planning the cabin. One is not dependent on the other, meaning that 
the land can be bought and then you can actually think about putting the cabin on it. You don't have to think about putting the cabin on it and then buy the land. You know, you could argue, well, I need to make sure the land's big enough. True, true. But, but in theory, both of those things can be done at once. So you can see that both of those red blocks are on top of one another, meaning that they're occurring during week one. Okay, so they're, they're tasks that can be done simultaneously. You cannot, however, clear the land until you actually be, uh, have ownership of it. So securing the land has to happen first before you clear the land. So let's assume that in the second week, after you've gotten title to the land, you can actually begin clearing it. And it will take you a week to do that. It says the task time is one week. So, okay, yep, clear the land. So that's going on in week two. Cut the logs. Now, seeing you're clearing land, uh, I think part of the trick is, is let's assume that you're cutting logs off the land and you're gonna use those same logs to build the cabin. So voila, in clearing the land, you've also cut the logs or in cutting the logs, you've also cleared the land. Now, so you can see that the clear land and cut logs can happen at the same time. Now, there's not enough logs on the land, however, for you to build a cabin. So you need another two weeks in order to cut some logs. So actually it's gonna take you three weeks in total to cut the logs. But the first week of the cutting and the first week of the land clearing or the week of the land clearing can be done simultaneously. So this has brought you up to four weeks in. So you're four weeks into your project and what you've done is you've got the, the plan, you got the land secured, you got the land cleared and you got the logs cut. In theory, if you got enough logs started, uh, you can actually, you know, kind of start uh, removing the barks from logs at this, while you're still cutting. You know, maybe you got several people helping you, but you can see that happening in week four as well. So again, a, a, it's a task that can be done simultaneously. The remaining tasks are sequential, meaning you got to install the foundation and the floor. And before you can build the walls, you have to have the floor finished. And before you can install the walls and doors, you have to have the walls put up. And before you can install a roof, you have to have the walls put up and the windows and doors put in. And before you can install a heating system, you have to have the thing built. So what we're seeing is with the Gantt chart, a schedule for the tasks and an estimating of the time it takes to do each of those tasks. You cannot do the last task before you get all the other tasks done. So it also sequences the tasks for you. So it does a whole bunch of things all in one shot. It says, here's the order that things need to happen in. Here's how long it's taking to do those tasks. And, and from that, you can pick your resources. So let's say, for example, clearing land. Well, you darn well better have a chainsaw during the time you're clearing land. You know, you don't need a chainsaw in the first week because you're building, uh, you're planning, and you're securing land. But in those weeks of clearing land and cutting logs, you need chainsaws. And a bark removal tool, you're going to need that in week four. If it takes um, two weeks, say, for example, for something to come in, let's assume a bark removal tool takes two weeks to get. You need to make sure then that you order it no later than the second week of the project because you won't have it ready for the fourth week unless you do something like that. So what the Gantt chart allows you to do is to sequence and plan the resources, human resources, the product resources. It allows you to do all those things in one shot. And it's a very visual compact type process too uh, that allows you to, to make the decisions and, and uh, you know get things ordered or plan things up. And uh, it will tell you when you need your money too, because if certain tasks take require money, you're gonna need to say, okay, I'm gonna need X amount of dollars in order to accomplish the task in the timeline. So what I've done here in this particular graphic, which uh, I put in is to outline the basic steps of the Gantt chart, which is determine the list of essential tasks for the project, then determine the task relationships, you know, and uh, is it can be done at Basically, what that's saying is, can it be done at the same time as other tasks, or is it sequential? Estimate the time frame for each task. And the total combination of all the tasks is your total time scale for your project. 
a developed project schematic uh, schedule in a graphical format, which is the actual drawing the graphic, and review the schedule each week. Uh, there's nothing to prevent this schedule from changing as you move along. So let's say, for example, it rained the whole week that you're supposed to remove bark from the logs. Well, if if that rained, what's going to happen is your whole schedule is going to get shoved back one week. So you can see instead of taking nine weeks to build a cabin now, it's going to take 10 weeks. So you can reevaluate the schedule as you move on to see if you're on schedule, off schedule, or what a revised schedule will be. And, and that's really the big takeaway I want you to bring away from this was to be able to, to understand the Gantt chart and to be able to use it. So, in fact, in the second discussion forum, that's what I want you to do is think of a project and develop a Gantt chart for it. So it's really no different than what I've done here in this little example is to say, okay, think of a project that you want to achieve, break it down into a various components, estimate the time frame for each of those components and whether components can uh, need to be in sequence or can be done simultaneously, and develop a, a Gantt chart for it, which would give us the total timeline for that project. And I'm, I'm sure that if you get the handle on building a Gantt chart, you will find this a useful tool in your business and moving uh, production processes uh, through fairly efficiently.